Drifting Continents and Spreading Seas. This chapter is a build up to the next chapter on plate tectonics. This chapter kind of spells out the methodology and the thought process and the scientific method behind coming up with the theory of plate tectonics. So we'll start this with uh, talking about Alfred Wegener. He was a German meteorologist. He spent, um, he, he died when he was 50. And before the, his untimely death, he did lots of expeditions to Greenland and up into the Arctic. He ended up actually dying in Greenland on an expedition on his way to provide food for another expedition. So kind of sad. They do say that he was not in great shape. He um, smoked a lot and just in general was not in great physical health when he died, probably of a heart attack. Anyway, he wrote a book in 1915, even as a meteorologist, he studied um, a little bit of geology and he wrote a book, The Origins of Oceans and Continents in 1915. In that book, he suggested that the continents moved and called this phenomenon continental drift. In that book, he also hypothesized um, supercontinents. Supercontinents are when the continents of the world were together. So he um, hypothesized Pangaea, uh, where the ocean, the Atlantic Ocean basin was essentially closed and all the continents were touching. So um, in 1915, though, nobody believed him. It wasn't a believable, um, accepted story. Move my face again. So uh, prior to Wegener in 1915, the thought was that the continents were fixed. They had not and were not and did not move around the earth and uh, that they were where they are and had always been in that place. When he proposed in 1915 continental drift, it was um, a, a new thought. It was a brand new idea. And uh, his idea that Pangaea, the supercontinent where the continents came together, it was all new ideas. He had, though, a lot of evidence. He had built it over time and studying maps and, and investigating other people's work. So there's a list here. Uh, the continents fit together like a puzzle. And that had actually been noticed. But so he put them together to make Pangaea. Past glaciations matched up over continents. Climate belts, we'll have a slide on this, but it showed that where there were deserts, they were continuous across other continents. There are fossils found in some areas that were very unique, found in others, we'll have a slide on that. And then also geologic units. So the rocks of the world are not laid out randomly. They can be kind of mapped across areas and he was able to do that across continents. So let's look at some of that evidence. The fit of the continents. Any little kid can see if they stare at a map long enough that if you were to close the Atlantic Ocean Basin, the continents would fit like a puzzle. So here is a map that shows um, spaces in orange there where there may be gaps and then spaces in that burgundy color where there may be overlapped edges. Most of that has been explained um, through faulting and faulting, faulting and folding since it was proposed. So they, um, this couldn't be a coincidence, really. Surely there was an explanation for how the continents fit together. Another piece of evidence was glaciations. On this image, what you're looking at here are striations. So these are scratches made in the bedrock by uh, the um, rocks that are embedded in ice. ice at that depth and deep in a glacier is kind of like a, a rock and it has clasped or pebbles in it. Those get embedded and act like sandpaper across these surfaces. So it polishes the surface like the gleaming one here in the image, but also makes those scratches. He was able across continents to match up these striations and their orientation and to show that it really was possible that those continents were together during a glaciation and glaciers that covered both of them. So here's what that image looks like. So it was centered around Antarctica and um, the glaciers by definition 
are moving bodies of ice. So you have usually on these continental um, ice caps, you'll have it come up to a central point and then the glacier is spreading out away from that central point. So in the image, you can imagine there was some central point and then the glaciers are spreading out away, kind of centered on Antarctica away from there. So if you can match up those um, scra scratches, the striations, you see the arrows shows you the movement of that ice. And they were able to date that time and show that then if you move those continents away, they, um, they matched up during, the, during Pangaea time. All right, here's those climate belts. Let me move my head again. So um, <clears throat> the geologic record can um, provide clues to past climates. For example, where you would have a swamp, there may be deposits of coal. So coal is the um, the fossil evidence and the fossilized like trees that have fallen into a swamp and were preserved. So if you can find coal and match it across continents, that would tell you that maybe those continents were touching each other at some time in the same climate belt. Coincident with that, they also found um, salt deposits. So just to the north along that belt above the coal deposits, Salt deposits mean there's a sunshine there, there would be a shallow basin that evaporated and left behind those salt deposits. And then above that, the desert sands, that's a, that shows to be, looks like an orange shark fin, is a sand dune. So you have desert environments, um, shallow sea environments, a um, swampy environment, and then it continues again to the shallow sea, back to a desert environment. So looking at the uh, bedrock geology, the geologic record, noting the environment of deposition and seeing that it matches across continents over a certain time frame also showed that Pangaea was a possibility. And to the further to the south there, there's that belt of glaciers. Okay, the fossil evidence the Mesosaurus, the um, Cynoganthus, and the Lystrosaurus are all fossils that are index fossils, meaning that they didn't live very long. They also um, didn't live in very many places. So plotting them on a map like this and noticing that um, they're, they could trace from, like from India to Africa to Antarctica in this one zone where, say, the Lestraris lived, and then going over to the Cynoganthus and seeing across South America and into Africa, being in an, um, also the Mesosaurus, matching those up was really, again, another piece of evidence to show that Pangaea was a reality. And there were some plants as well. See the green one there, the glass of terrace was also one. So matching up fossils across continents. Another one is uh, the geologic units. And these are um, geologic units of a certain age and a certain type. So one is mountain belts. So in brown there, able to match up um, mountain belts one with another was really a profound way to say, okay, maybe these did match up and the tectonics matched up as well, so mountain belts, and then really old um, Archean, some of the oldest crust in the leftover in the world, matching those up. So rock units, uh, glacial striations, and evidence of past glaciation, these um, belts of different environments of deposition, deserts and coal swamps, and um, the glaciers, all were evidence that Wegener proposed in that book in 1915 to say, hey, the continents have moved. They used to be together during Pangaea and now they're in this new configuration.